Well, good afternoon and welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Jason Fisher, your host today. And we're standing on a site here in the river in Southside where emerald ash borer was first found. So I'm standing on public land, uh, which is something I want to emphasize was a big helper in the spread of emerald ash borer uh, in more ways than one. So the, the goal of today is to introduce you to a few insect pests uh, in our forests here in Virginia of economic importance. And to define that, uh, what we're talking about is not just any forest insect pest, because there are thousands of those. What I've done today is, is enlisted the help of, a, of an expert, as well as my own personal experience uh, here doing work with forest insect pests. And so what we're looking at is ones that cause us uh, monetary loss of timber as a product, as well as uh, costs that uh, incur almost annually, uh, such as uh, spraying for gypsy moth or treating for emerald ash borer. So those are two uh, big ones. There are others. And then there's some that we're on the lookout for that we want to tell you about today. Um, thanks, Jason. So uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Caitlin DeWitt. I'm the Forest Health Specialist with the Virginia Department of Forestry. Typically, for the Forest Health Program at the Department of Forestry, we do a lot of monitoring and surveying the state for insect pests and disturbances and diseases and invasive plants. Um, so today, I'm going to be talking about a couple of the top invasive um, pests of economic importance in Virginia. Um, and I'll also be talking about some of the native pests that are also um, economically important in Virginia. And I like to make the distinction between the invasive and native pests because um, invasive pests typically cost more money to control. Um, and that is because they have arrived here uninvited and they don't have any natural enemies around that um, will help keep their populations regulated and under control. Our native pests can reach damaging levels and they do from time to time, but these are more cyclical outbreaks because they do have natural enemies that help reduce populations and crash these buildups. So I'm going to talk about some of the heavy hitters here in Virginia today, um, one of which I'm sure everybody has seen some of the damaging effects of emerald ash borer. This is an invasive wood boring insect um, that has been in the US since the early 2000s and it was probably brought over on some wood packaging material. Um, and since it was first detected up in Michigan in the early 2000s, it has spread far and wide um, and it threatens all native ash species in the United States. In Virginia, we have six native ash species um, and all of them are at risk for emerald ash borer. The damage is done by the insect feeding under the bark on the intervascular tissue and effectively it girdles the tree from the inside out and disrupts the movement of water and nutrients. Um, and so the tree can die pretty quickly within a couple years of heavy infestation from emerald ash borer. Um, and so I found a publication, it's a bit old at this point, it's from 2013, um, but it says that, that it estimates that the cost uh, for treatment, replacement, and removal of these ash trees um, is around $10 billion. So it's not a small amount of money to help try and stop this pest as it moves. And so we have found that the average cost is between $13 to $15 diameter inch um, to treat an ash tree. So if you've got a lot of ash trees on your property, that can add up very quickly. Um, so that is a very high cost associated with this invasive pest. Okay, I'm standing here in Southside at a site where emerald ash borer had devastated this area back in 2012 and 13. So it's been about 10 years. You can see the dead ash on the ground all around. I'm curious as to what's coming back and what I'm seeing mostly is uh, box elder. You can see this twig here, the bright green new growth, opposite branching. But we got hope because we got a an ash tree right here. You can see the bud, green ash. And so there's young ash coming back in this stand as I suspected. But uh, mostly some grasses, it's a wet area. I see some possum hall, some viburnums, uh, but mostly box elder is filling in these holes, it seems. 
you can see the remnants of those you know they're slowly falling into this river a little bit at a time creating some nice habitat for the catfish and uh, wreaking havoc on boat motors but more importantly when these trees fall and die you know those roots are holding that that bank together so to speak so every year when we get floods on all of our rivers there are five here in halifax we uh we see the rivers get wider and they get shallower um, another invasive insect that has high costs associated with it is spongy moth um, which was formerly known as gypsy moth And this was first brought over. It was not accidentally introduced. It was intentionally brought by a man um, up in Massachusetts in the late 1800s who liked to breed silkworms. And he brought them over. He could not get them to make nice silk like he wanted, so he just tossed them outside. Um, and they are a huge defoliator of many, many species of trees, um, including a lot of oak trees, which we really like. And so it's made its way since the late 1800s all the way down to Virginia. Um, we are the holding line thanks to the Slow the Spread program, um, which has been very effective at kind of making sure it does not leave the area which it has already established. Um, and that costs money to run that program and to do the suppression as well as the trapping and the monitoring. Um, and so there's a lot of effort that goes into keeping this moth and these caterpillars within the area that it's already known. Um, every year, the Forest Service will spend money to do aerial sprays um, to control populations when they detect high levels in these areas. Now, that's not to say that some of our native pests cannot reach these damaging levels and cost money to suppress. Um, the most destructive native forest pest in the southeastern United States is the southern pine beetle. Um, and this is a tiny wood boring beetle that gets into pine trees um, and it can rapidly build up in population. It uses a complex system of pheromones to meet together, aggregate, mate, and then move um, through a pine stand. And it can really devastate a pine stand rather quickly. Um, I found one Forest Service publication that estimates that between 1973 to present, Southern pine beetle has caused close to $4 billion um, in damage between removal, um, suppression, and just loss of um, timber income to foresters and landowners in the southeastern United States. So some of our native pests can also cause a lot of money <laughs> to, to try and um, control and eradicate. A couple additional bark beetles that are native to Virginia that cause economic loss include the turpentine beetle and Ips engraver beetles. Here are a few photos of pines that were found dead in Central District over the past two years that ended up being these beetles. Typically we see anywhere from one to a dozen trees that uh, were lost to these beetles in the past. But over the last couple of years, we're seeing areas as much as a half acre or more uh, that have been devastated by this native And we pest. had some straight line winds come through this area just a couple of years ago. And you can see this blowdown. These Virginia pine here where an old field was. But these kind of areas invite um, insect pests like bark beetles and other critters just because of the the new fallen trees and the sap and the odor that they emit, the pheromones uh, indicate stress. So not uncommon to see this, particularly in South Side of Virginia. Just two winters ago, we had probably one of the worst ice storms we've ever had. And there are a lot of patches like this. Well, in taking a closer look, which always helps, you can see the pitch running out of this pine and so we've got some some bark beetles that have come in here and got in this tree at least. Here's a a close up here. I can keep my balance of a pitch tube. It's pretty classic. Most likely turpentine beetle or ips. If you rake the bark back and carefully looked at the gallery, you'd know that for sure. We'll take a look at some of this frass. You see here, 
And if we pull the bark back, all kinds of secondary critters are in this tree. It's been dead a while. It's probably fat frass from a pine sawyer beetle. But irregardless, most of the uh, critters you see on trees, particularly if they've laid down a while like this, are secondary, and so they're not the primary culprit. The culprit here was a storm. You can see the holes right there from the bark beetles. And generally when we go out in south side, the foresters, Department of Forestry, myself, uh, to these calls from landowners looking at uh, beetle killed trees, what we're looking for is to make sure it's not southern pine bark beetle since those typically uh, historically have taken out whole stands of trees, acres of trees, versus a couple trees here and there. However, uh, in the last three to five years, in my district, we've had a pretty big outbreak of Ips and Graver beetles, and they have occurred in planted pine as well as mature uh, native pine like you see here in this stand where I'm at. The last of our native insects we'll mention today include the variable oak leaf caterpillar and fall canker worms. Both of these have made headlines over the last few years with local outbreaks. Um, we do have a couple of others that we're also on the lookout for that could be really, really devastating if they ever reach Virginia. Um, one such pest is the Asian longhorn beetle. Um, this is an insect that has been found in Ohio and New York and Massachusetts. Um, and it has a huge host list, which is one of the things that we're most concerned about, but it also really enjoys maple trees, um, which are very common in our forests, but also in the urban landscape. Um, and so we know that there is a very effective program to help control this pest. Um, it's been very effective in these other, these other states and localities. Um, it's in total eradication of all host species. So it's pretty devastating, especially in urban areas if um, you know streets are just lined with maples. Um, they take down every tree that could be and is infested with Asian longhorn beetle. And that's a great cost to the localities, the municipalities, um, states. And then also, um, it just looks really bad. So um, we know that it's effective, but it is quite aesthetically and economically <laughs> damaging to, to do that control effort. Um, there's a number of others as well. The Cyrex wood wasp um, could be very devastating to our pine forests, which we have a lot of in Virginia. And then there's some that are getting newly established in Virginia, like laurel wilt disease and beech leaf disease that we're also on the lookout for because we don't want to keep spreading through Virginia. Two new invasive pests arrived to Virginia in 2021. These include the laurel wilt disease, which is spread by the red bay ambrosia beetle, and beech leaf disease, which is spread by a leaf feeding nematode and affects our native American beach here in the U.S. So always something to be on the lookout for. Um, and really the big thing to take note is, um, you know, there's a giant cost associated with these pests once they are introduced to our state and our forest. And so really being um, proactive about not moving wood material, um, phytosanitation efforts, things like that, um, you know, APHIS agents down at the ports kind of inspecting cargo as it comes in. These are really uh, important things that do cost money, but help maybe save money in the long run um to ensure that we're not suppressing a number of invasive pests in virginia so caitlin that's awesome i appreciate your input it, it adds uh, a, a lot of credibility to to what i'm sharing and uh, we, we enjoy working with you guys and appreciate all that you do so yeah that's awesome thanks thanks jason hey thanks for joining us and being uh um a regular watcher or regular viewing the recordings and go to our YouTube channel and subscribe and continue to build that number for us. We're over a thousand now. 
Uh, so thank you to our viewership for watching 15 Minutes in the Forest.